Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the top five effects plugins you need to buy to use with Reaper. So the first plugin I want to show you is an EQ. And EQ is one of the most important plugins in our arsenal. For mixing and production purposes, we can use an EQ to balance out the frequencies of our instruments in the most pleasing way. And one of my favorite EQs, and really the only one I use, is Rea EQ, or Re EQ. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in your list of plugins, as we can see right here. And when we open it up, it looks like this. And we can resize it to any size we want, like this. It starts off with four frequencies, with the first one, low shelf, and these two, parametric or band frequencies, and the high one as a high shelf. But we can change them to anything we want. We can make this one a high pass, which will cut off all the low frequencies in our sound, or a low shelf, which will boost or cut any of the frequencies we choose on down, which makes it much more musical as it doesn't sound as peaky. We do the same thing with the high frequency up here. We get boost or cut it, and it's gonna affect that frequency all the way up. Again, making it sound more natural and not as peaky as using the band or parametric frequencies, which just boost the frequency we choose, whether it be narrow or wide for boosting or cutting. We can use them on top of each other to get just the perfect sound we need. And like I said, it sounds just as good as any other EQ I've ever used, built into a DAW or third party. And when you play sound through it, we see the frequencies before and after. So you can see the changes we're making in real time. And we could hide all this stuff or show it or show the phase we're introducing by adding an EQ. And of course, we could add as many bands as we need. So that's the Re-EQ EQ plugin. And like I said, it comes with Reaper. Now, if you stay tuned to the end, I might throw in a bonus plugin beyond these five. So the second plugin I want to show you is a compressor. And similar to an EQ, a compressor is an incredibly important part of our mixing and production arsenal, as it controls the dynamic range of our tracks, making our productions more punchy and more glued together. One of my favorite compressors is the Rea Comp or Recomp compressor. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in your list of plugins as we can see right here. And when we open it up, it looks like this, with no compression. So to bring the ratio up, we should bring it up to about four to one, and then adjust our threshold right here, so it goes into our audio. We can see the compression, or how much compression, right here. With a little, or a lot. Then we could adjust our attack and release to decide how it compresses. With a quicker attack, it's going to respond right away. And with a slower attack, our transients are going to come through without being compressed. Then we have the release. A quick release is going to react very quickly, compressing and uncompressing over time. But if we make it slower, it'll sound more subtle and smoother as the compression doesn't react as quickly. And like I said, this is one of my favorite compressors, but I still use a few others like the 1175 compressor, which looks like this. We could adjust our threshold and see the compression down here. Adjust the attack and release. Or the general dynamics compressor right here, where we could adjust the compression using a graph. Just draw it in, compression, expansion, or even gating. Any kind of dynamics curve we want. So those are my favorite compressors 
And once again, they all come with Reaper. So the third plugin I want to show you is a reverb. Reverb is created when a sound occurs in a space, sending sound waves out in all directions. These waves reflect all surfaces in the space, decaying in volume until the reflections eventually die off. So a reverb plugin mimics this effect when we add it to our tracks. And one of my favorite plugins to do this is Reverb or Reverb. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in your list of plugins, as we can see right here. When we open it up, it looks like this. Now this plugin is an IR reverb, or an impulse response reverb, which means it uses actual samples of recorded space. And while it doesn't come with any, you can find a ton of free ones online. And once you download them, we can go to add, choose to add the file, choose one, and the sample is imported up here. Then we could adjust it by adding a filter or adding a trim gain stretch and stretching it to be longer or shorter. Now, if we wanted something simpler, like a simple digital reverb, we could use reverbing, which looks like this. We could adjust the wet and dry, the room size and dampening, and then filter the reverb. So those are my favorite reverbs. And once again, they come with Reaper. So the fourth plugin I wanna show you is a delay. Delay is a signal processing technique that repeats the recorded sound. When the processed audio is blended back in with the original, it creates an echo-like effect. The delayed signal may be played back multiple times or fed back into the original to create the sound of a repeating, decaying echo. And my favorite delay, and really the only one I use, is Rhea Delay or Redelay. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in our list of plugins right here. And if we open it up, it looks like this. We could adjust the wet and dry over here, the length in milliseconds, or based on musical or eighth notes, adjust our feedback or repeats, filter the delay, and even pan it over here. And we could have multiple taps right here, creating multiple delays that all do different things. So this is my favorite delay and really the only one I use. And like the others, it comes with Reaper. So the fifth plugin I wanna show you is a limiter. A limiter is very similar to a compressor with a few differences. With compression, you're focusing on individual tracks in the mix, shaping their sound individually and sometimes as a group, where a limiter takes compression to the extreme and provides more use in the mastering process or during mixing as the last effect on the master fader. As its name suggests, limiting sets a limit or a ceiling to the output level. So no sound beyond the threshold can get through. That's why they're often called a brick wall limiter. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in our list of plugins right here. And if we open it up, it looks like this. And similar to the compressor, we can go to our threshold and bring it down into the signal right here. See what's happening with the waveform over here and up here, see how much we're limiting and adjust our brick wall ceiling where we want it set. And that's the rear limit limiter. And again, it's the only limiter plugin I use. Now, earlier I mentioned a bonus plugin. So I have a favorite for pitch correction. And as a user of Reaper, it's already installed in our list of plugins right here. The rear tune or retune plugin. And if we open it up, it looks like this. And we could use this to correct the pitch of our instruments or tune our vocals by switching this to correction, auto pitch, choose the key, and just play our track and it'll correct the pitch automatically. Or we could do it manually. Turn this off, turn this on, 
it'll track the pitch. Boy, we'll play it. Let's we'll zoom in and just draw in the correct pitches like this or this to fix the notes manually. So that's the reattune or retune pitch correction plugin. And just like with the other plugins, it comes with Reaper. So these are all the plugins you need to buy to use with Reaper. But unfortunately, you can't buy any of these because they come free with Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's the top five effects plugins you need to buy for Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Bye.